Our objective within this lesson is to subtract fractions greater than or equal to 1. Here I have the question 1 and a third minus 1 fifth. Let's think about what this looks like. Here we have a number line where it is that we are starting at 1 and a third, and then we're subtracting 1 fifth. 1 and a third is definitely more than 1. It's still less than 2. And then so if we place it onto the number line, we would be right here at 1 and 1 third. When we are, in this case, subtracting 1 fifth, we know that 1 fifth is actually smaller than 1 third, so we would draw back from the number line and not quite to 1. So we know in subtracting 1 fifth, we know that our answer should be somewhere between 1 and 1 and 1 third. We know to make like units, and then so we are working with 1 and 1 third minus 1 fifth. Let's make some like units. Keep our 1, and we can break that in part into 1 plus 1 third. And in this case, we are subtracting 1 fifth, and again, we're making like units. So we're going to multiply by 5, multiply by 5 for the third to get fifteenths. And then in this case, we're subtracting 1 fifth, and in this case, we'll multiply it by the other den denominator of 3 so that we are talking about fifteenths. So this is 1 plus 1 fifth, actually that's 5 fifteenths, minus 3 fifteenths. So we have 1 plus 2 fifteenths, which equals 1 and 2 fifteenths. Here we have 3 and a half minus 2 and 2 thirds. I'm going to show you two approaches and two ways we can go ahead and solve this problem here. First off, with method number 1, let's draw a number line showing what we're thinking here. We can break apart 3 and a half into 3 along with its fractional part of 1 half. And in that case, we're still subtracting 2 and 1 half, 2 and 2 thirds from it, which can be broken down into 2 along with 2 thirds. And remember, we're subtracting both of those there. 3 minus 2 already is 1. And remember, I still have one half more than that, because that's where it is that I was starting, but I'm still subtracting two thirds from there. So on our number line, we started at three, and we're grouping whole numbers. We went back two, because we subtracted two to get back to one. And then after we went back to one, we actually added a half. That's the plus a half, because we should have started at three and a half, not three. And then we actually went back two thirds from there. And then two thirds is more than a half. So it goes back two thirds past one there. And then so our answer should be smaller than one. Here we have one plus a half minus two thirds, which we can rewrite as 1 minus 2 thirds plus 1 half. 1 minus 2 thirds is a third, and then so we have plus a half. If we rewrite these so they have a common denominator, that is 2 six plus 3 six, which will equal 5 six. Now our alternate approach to this Let's start again with 3 and a half minus 2 and 2 thirds. We will still rewrite it as um, we're going to take the 3 minus the 2, which is 1. 
So we get 3 minus 2 plus a half minus 2 thirds. 3 minus 2 is 1. Put it together with the 1 and a half there, minus 2 thirds. And then we use an improper fraction approach. So we get 3 halves minus 2 thirds. 1 and a half is worth 3 halves. And then finally we can do our work where it is that we get a common denominator. So that is 9 6 minus 4 6 which also equals 5 6. So the key with this second approach, take care of our whole numbers first, put it back together with our plus there, with the plus half, go into an improper fraction, get a common denominator, and then solve by doing your work there. We'll take another look at that with another problem. Here's the method two approach again. So we have four and three fifths minus two and five sevenths. Let's rewrite that. Remember that's four plus three fifths minus two and then also minus five sevenths where we broke apart each of those. Put our whole numbers together. So we get four minus two and be very careful with this portion here. Plus three fifths minus five sevenths. 4 minus 2 is 2. Put it together with the 3 fifths, so you have 2 and 3 fifths minus 5 sevenths. Rewrite 2 and 3 fifths as an improper fraction. Each whole is worth 5 fifths, so that's 5 fifths, 10 fifths, and 3 more fifths is 13 fifths minus 5 sevenths. Now all we need to do is to get a common denominator. And in this case, we are multiplying by the other denominator. Looks like some bigger numbers here. 13 times 7. I'll do that work off to the side. 1, 2, looks like 91. So we have 91 35ths minus 25 35ths, which is that 5 times 5. And then the 7 times 5 there as well. Showing my work again for 91 minus 25. The regroup there. Looks like it's 66. So I have 66 35ths, which equals 35 goes into 66 one whole time with the remainder of 31. So it's 1 and 31 35ths. Our answer here is 1 and 31 35ths. It is your turn to try. 7 and 1 fourth minus 3 and 2 thirds. Break it down first. Remember you're subtracting 3 and also subtracting 2 thirds. So we have 7, put it together with the 1 fourth, then we're subtracting 3, and we're also subtracting the 2 thirds. Put the whole numbers together. You're going to be 1 fourth more than that, and then subtracting the 2 thirds. Here's where your work might differ. 7 minus 3 is 4. And then we have the 4 plus the 1 fourth minus the 2 thirds. Put the 4 and the 1 fourth together to get 4 and 1 fourth. This is method 2 minus the 2 thirds. For method 1 from that step, you would have gone... Um, so this is method two still. You would have gone 17 fourths minus two thirds to get a common denominator and then to solve from there. For method one, you would have taken four and one fourth minus the two thirds. You would have gone, let's see, four minus the two thirds and then add back in the one fourth. Four minus the two thirds, counting down from four, we have 3 and 2 thirds, and then 3 and 1 third, plus 1 fourth. And then that's basically 3 plus 1 third plus 1 fourth, which we can solve. Times 3, times 3, Hello. times 4, times 4. We have 4 twelfths 
plus 3 twelfths, plus the 3 still, which will be 3 and 7 twelfths. So that 7 and 1 fourth minus 3 and 2 thirds equals 3 and 7 twelfths. If we go back to the method 2 with the 17 fourths minus 2 thirds, again we need like units, so we'll multiply by 4, multiply by 4, and multiply by 3, multiply by 3. 17 times 3 is 51, so we have 51 twelfths minus, looks like, 8 twelfths, yeah, 8 twelfths, which is equal to 43 twelfths. When we see 43 twelfths, we should be thinking of 43 divided by 12. It does go in three whole times with that remainder of 7. That's why we do get, just as before, 3 and 7 twelfths. Here's one last problem. Let's just take a look. We have 9 and 1 third. So we have 9, and then it's going to be even more than that at 9 and 1 third, and we're subtracting 2 and 2 fifths from there. Now, we'll start from 9, though, because it's easier to think of starting from 9 rather than starting from um, 9 and a third. And then so it is 9 plus 1 third minus 2 minus 2 fifths. Regrouping with the whole numbers, it's 9 minus 2. That's why we travel from our number line, where it is that we go from 9 all the way back to minus 2. 9 minus 2 is 7. That's why we're at 7. And then we are still going up 1 third from there and down 2 fifths. So we're adding 1 third, but we're subtracting 2 fifths. And we know that 2 fifths is actually bigger than 1 third. That way we're going to be less than 7. So here was the add of the 1 third, and there is the subtract of the 2 fifths. Subtracting the 7 minus the 2 fifths, this is method 1. That would be 6 and 3 fifths plus 1 third. So we multiply by 3 there, multiply by 3 there, where we're getting like units. Multiply by 5, multiply by 5. We could break apart 6 with that 3 fifths, so we get 6 plus all of that there. So we have 6 and 9 fifteenths plus 5 fifteenths, which will equal 6 and 14 fifteenths. Now if we had changed that to an improper fraction from, let's see this point right here, we would have 7 and 1 third, made ourselves some more rooms, so we're taking it from this point right here, 7 and 1 third minus 2 fifths. Each of those holes is worth 3 thirds, so 7 times 3 is 21, plus 1 is 22, so we would have 22 thirds minus 2 fifths, and then we would just need like units. larger number there, we get 110 fifteenths minus 6 fifteenths, which is equal to 104 fifteenths, which would be thinking of 104 divided by 15. I know our answer should be 6 with that remainder of 14, so let's use the 6. 6 times 5 is 30, 0 regroup of 3. 6 times 1 is 6, plus 3 is 9. So that's subtracting 90 there from 104, you do get 14. And if I could divide that 14, I would have divided it by 15. That's why the answer is 6 and 14 fifteenths. 9 and a third minus 2 and 2 fifths does equal 6 and 14 fifteenths. One of the big huge keys is to get those like units. Remember when you're adding and subtracting fractions, to always express answers in simplest form.